Welcome to HackBits, where we cover a variety of cybersecurity subjects. Join your host, Gaspar Martirano, as he interviews cybersecurity experts and discusses the latest cybersecurity news, trends, data breaches, and updates on state-sponsored cybercrime. Okay, welcome everyone to HackBits. I'm really excited to have a co-worker on with me today, Bailey Saltz. So Bailey uh, is the Director of Global Operations for... Um, our company, uh, Life Ours. And uh, I'm really happy to have you on, Bailey. How are you doing today? Yeah, thanks for having me. Doing really well. I'm glad to be here on this beautiful Monday. Yes. <laughs> every <laughs> Monday is beautiful. You know, yeah, I was joking last week. I said, you know, in cybersecurity, it seems like every day is a Monday. So that's that's kind of the world we live in. Uh, uh, so it's been great. So today we're going to talk about careers in cybersecurity. And uh, Bailey, so before we start, tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I have a background in uh, in a little bit of everything, sort of what I'm what I'm doing here at LifeRs, um, but obviously on a more global scale now. Um, so I've I've been you know in the legal world in the past as a paralegal, also in recruiting and kind of office management and operations in a variety of companies from you know uh, global advertising to small kind of s- software startups. So always really taking a look at what the trends are in terms of hiring, no matter what role I've, I'm in, um, just because I'm always, I've always been really connected to growing the team and growing out the company and came to Life Ours originally as kind of an HR and office manager a little over a year ago and have really enjoyed uh, developing this into a global operations role um, in this, in this really unique company um, in uh, obviously this, even more unique industry right now. Yeah. So, uh, and today we're going to focus obviously on careers in cybersecurity, which is uh, both uh, a topic we could both chat about a bit. So, you know, right now we know it, it's it's crazy out there. Um, you know, the, what does what does the market look like? Uh, just let's talk about maybe in general uh, the cybersecurity world. What does it look like uh, the job market right now? Yeah. So, for if you are a person who has recently graduated with a degree in cyber or just recently got certifications and looking to go into cyber, the market is looking really great for you right now. (laughs) Um, I think uh, in doing, you know, a a bunch of different market data research and running some reports um, just to try to enhance our recruiting uh, efforts here at LifeRs, you kind of start to see that the general consensus is that there's, you know, over three and a half million job openings at, at this point for, for people in cybersecurity and, um, you know, not, not really enough people to fill it. So uh, not only are more cyber companies popping up, but people are opening their own internal security. Um, insurance companies are now re- requiring proactive security. IT jobs are turning into more cybersecurity jobs um, and network operations. So if you are a cyber professional, you, you know, you're you're uh, you're you should be on top of the world right now. <laughs> yeah, with, you know, uh, all that all that the world has to offer. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of the dot com boom. If you remember back then, uh, you know, I remember looking for a job during the dot com boom, and at that time, like if you just you you mentioned technology, if you had any kind of hand in it, one way or the other, you were. Um, you were going to get a job. Uh, so you're, you know, going out there. I remember flying into New York City, interviewing, and having seven job offers in a week because it, it, there was such a uh, a glutton of, of jobs available and not enough people to fill them. So it, it almost feels a little bit like that again, where it's just um, and it's tough for employers, right? Because you have to compete with everyone else looking as well. Yeah, it is, and I mean, even in my last company, um, it wasn't it wasn't cyber, but it was software. So we needed a lot of software developers and coders, DevOps engineers, you know, you name it. And like you were just saying with the dot com boom, that was that was the big uh, flavor of the week, I guess, in the job world for a while. And it still is, of course, coders are still needed, but um, this this need for people with these very specific skill sets to be able to you know, check for, for ransomware and vulnerabilities and all the different things that go into cyber is, uh, it's, it's just growing by the second and it's not going to stop anytime soon, especially as, you know, the world gets even more digital, not only with COVID, but just in the direction we've been going in the past so five or 10 years. When you're out there hunting and you're looking around trying to find folks to fill positions, like where, where's your kind of your go-to place to start the, uh, start the start the process of trying to find someone who might fit in with our our company and our our team yeah so um it's pretty cool since since we are 
global. Um, that does help a little bit because I do have the opportunity to look in different parts of the world where we have entities. Um, but of course, you know, we have a lot of US based clients, a lot of clients, even with COVID and kind of with COVID ending, you know, they want on site engagements, we do need to hire in the US. So like for most people, LinkedIn is usually the first place to start. Um, but from there, it's really just a spiral of, okay, click on this company, click on a similar company, click on people that they're connected to, and really just start digging in the weeds there. Um, not only with security companies, but really with like a lot of consulting firms, that's where you can find some really great talent as well. Um, and with those larger consulting firms, I mean, some of them like, like IBM, for example, um, you know, it's a really established company. They've been around for a long time. They're not necessarily though going to put as much into the education and certifications that a company like we, like we would. So it's really about capitalizing on, okay, you want to learn how to be a certified ethical hacker. We'll, we'll pay to get you there and, and kind of getting your foot in the door that way. Sure. So the other thing is I, I look I look at um, the people that are out there and one of the things, and I've always wanted to ask this question, like how important is the actual structure? It's kind of a silly question, but how important is the structure of the resume? I remember when uh, when someone would come to me and they would, they would you know, I would, I would get a stack of resumes or I would, you know, put it out there from Indeed or one of these sites and I would look at it as a head of a department. I, back in the day, I would get these resumes, I would look at them and I wasn't like so picky. Like I didn't really care about the layout or, you know, I, some of them were pretty funky. <laughs> they came, you know, they put their pictures on it. Do you, does that really matter? Like, you know, when you're creating these resumes, um, how important is it that it look a certain way or, or like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, I kind of agree with you, which, which I don't really care about the layout or font or anything, as long as I can kind of follow the story of the sure. person's career. I mean, there are there are resumes that come where I am a little uh, confused as to where they went and what happened in between this year and this year and, you know, how this job led to this job. So that's not really ideal. <laughs> sure. um, but, you know, I don't, I don't care if there's like a, a little logo of their LinkedIn or their Twitter profile, you know, connected to it and spending all those hours in, in photo editor and everything that people find so important these days. Um, you know, there, there's the key things to look for, obviously in cyber, you kind of head right for those certifications and then those years of experience in those certain roles. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty detail oriented, so I, I will notice some grammatical errors and spelling errors. I'm definitely quicker to forgive the grammar um, than the spelling because, you know, it's even with the English, the English language changes like pretty much every second now. So I don't even know if, if what I learned as, as proper grammar is considered that anymore. So a little forgiving there. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> I, 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 I'm the same way. Like, I'll, unless it's like grotesque, I'm pretty forgiving. Right, uh, exactly. Uh, uh, that happens. Um, so, so. What do you think is going to happen? Like, you know, right now uh, we're in Q4. Um, what are your feelings about the end of this year going into next, especially with COVID? So do you think that the work from home is still going to be uh, popular or you, do you feel that, um, you know, you can use us as an example, like where where, where, do we, where are we heading and where do you think just in general uh, people will be more accepting of, of work at home and, and uh, disconnected employees that are not in the office? Yeah. So um, for us personally, just to use as an example to, to speak to what I know, I think the work from home is is fine. I mean, you know, you, you've worked here almost as long as I have. You see that we, we're really good at staying connected across time zones, across countries, you know, between US and India with, with that difference and then all the other places in between. Um, the work from home is really, I, I think, is works out well for all of us. Uh, we have a really committed group of people who know, you know, what they, what they need to do and the hours they need to commit to being in front of their screen. Um, and we, we also understand that people want to enjoy that flexibility working from home, which we, which we really encourage as well. I would say the bigger thing is to find people who, even if they want to work remotely, will be available for travel if needed. Because, you know, with a lot of cyber incidents, uh, it's, it's, it's sensitive work. Sometimes it involves servers, it involves different physical hardware. Um, and sometimes clients just really don't want somebody remoting in to, to look into their network, um, especially those bigger more, uh, you know, kind of more established corporations. So I think it's, it's a little bit of a, a balance of, okay, yes, you can work remote, you can work from wherever you want, but you, 
kind of have the expectation that there may be a few engagements during the year where you might have to come on site either to the client or to our lab here in New York. Yeah, I, I, I find that interesting because I, I would think that if someone was hacked or something happened, there must be some sort of comfort level if they can put a face to the name like in person instead of just having you know, someone else logging in remotely, which caused the problem to begin with, right? Usually it's it's someone from the outside that might be uh, reaching and getting in the door. So they want to make sure that they uh, they know the people and trust them. Oh, yeah, 100%. And I honestly think it's, it's insane how, not ins- I mean, insane in a good way, how how up to date our lab is where we actually can securely do all of these tests and scans and everything remotely without risking the security of the company um, that we're working for. So we definitely have the technology. I mean, we're equipped for it. And I, I imagine most of these other large cyber firms and established firms are as well. But yeah, like you said, there, there's a comfort level of seeing somebody working on your network every day. It's very sensitive work, you know, um, I mean, even for, for, even for things like with, with like, you know, older people who need help with email, um, th- they usually want to see the person that's going to help them out with their email, even though it's probably nothing too sensitive before they give them the work remotely to, to, you know, get them set up with whatever technology situation they need. So it's a, it's a give and take. Um, I imagine that to stay competitive, most other firms would probably continue with the remote work as well. I kind of seeing that trend everywhere. You know, if people uh, if people are told they're going to have to come into the office, they'll just go to another firm um, in in any kind of working situation. So, I, I guess it's a it's a monster we created, but you know we're working with it and and evolving with it. So yeah, what so, are you going to do? So, is there any? Um, how about certifications? I know you, you talked a little bit about that. Is there, is there certain ones you look out for? Uh, kind of even as a minimum that 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 someone have when they're when they're applying for a job, especially if they're doing things hands on. So, what do you, what are your kind of your thoughts on some of the certifications that are out there? Yeah, so I mean, as you and I know, um, in in working here and just understanding general security basics and and understanding that there's certifications that help you there, it's it's weird because. Yes. Would it be nice to see CompTIA Security Plus on every resume? Yes. Do I think that somebody who already has years of experience doing penetration testing and, you know, their GIAC and OSDP and everything like that is going to take the time and energy to go through a CompTIA Security Plus when they already understand it? Not really. So, it's, it's a, again, a, a weird middle for a more junior person. And for example, for people that are kind of new, stu- uh, newly new to the work world, excuse me, um, recent students, when they have something like a security plus or even like an AWS certification, that's like, that's really great to see because it just shows that they actually do want to commit the time and energy to this career. They don't just want to try to get a job in it because it is the cool thing for the moment or the best place to be right now. Um, so it really depends on the experience level. Obviously, if they have a lot more years of experience and they don't have you know, their specialized certification, that's also a little weird, but some people are more hands-on um, you know, maybe, you know, you never know what they were doing at the time. Maybe they just learned it all on site. Maybe they didn't feel like spending the money because, you know, those certifications are expensive as, as is any sort of education. Um, so that's why I do like to <laughs> kind of start off with saying, Hey, you want to, you want more certifications? You want to build yourself up? We'll, we'll help you out there. Yeah. And that's, and that's the other thing I think it's important is that, uh, when they work for a company like ours, or if they go to any company, one of the things you should look at is, not just, um, you know, hey, do I like my coworkers and, and such, but is it a place I can grow and, 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 and stay? Because, you know, we want people to stick around, right? And I think that's always, retention is always a challenge in any industry, but I think even especially in cybersecurity, because it can be a stressful job. So what are kind of some of the things that we offer, uh, that we offer as a company that you think uh, helps in, in trying to retain employees so that, that, you know, they do make this a career where they're here longer than just, you know, a few years. You know, obviously, everyone wants to, they want them to invest in the business as much as the business invests in them. So what are your, some, some of your thoughts on that? Yeah, so I would say it is really helpful. Um, you know, there, there's plenty of times where you do need, you need to go in and hire somebody who's senior and can come in and hit the ground running and knows what they're doing. But it is really helpful for, for us and has been over the past few years to get more of those junior people because we, 
you know, it's, it's kind of like a, a, a cyber candy store for them. They come in here and whether they start off as just like an SOC analyst and doing some monitoring and managed defense or some very junior level DFIR, they see that we have so many different departments from DFIR. Um, and even within DFIR, there's so many different things you can do from e-discovery and incident response. We have offensive security, managed defense. We have advisory, which is kind of a, a, t- a totally different animal and a little more um, specialized. And, you know, we really do give them that message where we want you to grow here. Um, it, you know, you, you might not want to be an SOC analyst forever. And we get that. We, we understand that from experience. But um, look at all these other departments we have and look at all these other places we can help you grow. Um, you know, we'll, we'll not only help you out with those certifications, we're going to give you that hands-on experience so that as you're as you're doing your your day job, you're learning this other job that you're really passionate about, and we always are going to have these open conversations with you to make sure you get to where you, where you need to be. So, um, I, I think just just being authentic in that way and saying like, listen, we know that not every aspect of this department is the most glamorous, but it's important. And we, you know, when you put in the work, we notice the work, and we want to help you do whatever other work you're interested in down the line. That's great. So, so Belly, if, if someone's interested and they hear this podcast and they want to say, Hey, I want to apply for a job there. So how do they go about that with our cut with uh, life horse? Yeah, absolutely. So we have tons of jobs posted on our website, which we're always updating. Um, and I think that those are all posted to various job boards, to LinkedIn indeed. But yeah, if you just go to our website, go to careers in cyber and hit apply, it'll come right to me. Or if you want to reach out directly, I always love when people reach out to me directly and show their interest and their passion. So you can send me an email to uh, bailey.salts at lifears.com. You can, of course, see the spelling of my name on the website as well. Um, And always happy to have a conversation, even if it's literally just a conversation. You know, maybe you just started a new role and you're not looking to move right now because you want to stay in a certain job for a long time, which is you know, admirable. And I really do like to see that as well on resumes, people who stick with companies for a certain amount of time. Um, and you just want to talk to me or to one of our experts and, and find out a little bit about consulting um, in the cyber world that is, you know, always encouraged and welcomed. Bailey, thank you so much for taking the time today to chat. Uh, I, I hope you'll come back again. We'll, we'll chat some more, maybe about some other topics. So appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Yep. Thanks again, Gaspar. Yep. You know where to find me for (laughs) any other podcasts and uh, speak to you soon. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.